Hi, I'm Zach. I've hurt my groin numerous times, and I'm going to show you today one simple exercise that's going to fix it. It has nothing to do with the groin, and it has to do with training an opposing muscle group. So we're going to go in, and we're going to show you that now. So the reason, so I kept pulling my groin magnus. Obviously, in adduction here, when we're adducting, the groin magnus is going to be the primary mover, and then you have the adductors. The adductors and groin magnus are going to be slightly different opposing muscle groups that are going to affect them and cause each of those areas to pull. But we're going to focus today on why the groin magnus pulls, and I'm also going to teach you a little bit about why the adductors pull. We have that in other episodes that you're going to be able to check out, and links are at the end of the video. So if we're just talking about the, the groin magnus here pulling, which is the major muscle group here of the adductors, it really relates to the strength of the hip flexor. Mainly the rectus femoris, which is the primary mover with the iliopsoas. Don't worry about the iliopsoas, it's gonna generally be a natural, naturally strong in most people, that's really like a compensation muscle. So we don't need to, we don't need to focus on that too much. But what we need to focus is on, on is the strength of the rectus femoris. And what happens is, if your body, you, you always get hurt at the strength, not the weakness. So if your groin magnus is pulling, what happens is, is the body goes, you know what, I don't have strength from the rectus femoris here, the main hip flexor muscle, so I'm going to put all my pressure and force on the strength here. I'm going to recruit more of the groin magnus during jumping, during running, and then eventually, pop, it pulls. So we're going to show you how to, we're going to show you now how to target that rectus femoris so that you can, you can take the pressure off the groin magnus and let that heal. Before we go into the exercise to isolate the rectus femoris, I just want to teach you a little bit more about the rectus femoris here. So the rectus femoris is a, is a hip flexor and it's also a knee extensor here. So it does both. So in order to isolate it, you need to combine knee hip extension with knee flexion. That's the best way to isolate it. Now, I want, what I also want you to realize is, is when you're doing this here, your adductor muscles are working. Your groin isn't working. Your groin is not part of hip flexion, but the adductor chain is part of hip flexion. So if you're doing an exercise like this, you shouldn't feel too much pressure on the magnus because it's not part of that. It's not part of that, uh, that hip movement. The other thing I want you to realize about the rectus femoris, everyone thinks because it's, a knee, because it's part of knee extension that it's gonna, be, uh, it's gonna get a lot of work when you're squatting and when you're doing uh, knee extension exercises, but it really doesn't get that much work and I'm gonna explain why right now. So if we get down to 90 degrees here, your, your, main, your other three quad muscles are gonna dominate and take over your vastus lateralis, your intermedius, and also your VMO. Those are gonna dominate and take over. Any, when you're doing any type of squat to 90 degrees, lunges to 90 degrees, and the rectus femoris is gonna be used mainly as a stabilizer. Now, if we get down super low, so if we're doing really low lunges here, and I don't feel like doing it because I'm getting older, I don't wanna get hurt, or you're doing those front squats and you're going super low with those front squats, because you're, clo because you're more in hip flexion here, the rectus femoris is forced harder to work, and that's ultimately what can, uh, another tool to strengthen it up. But if you have a groin pull, you're not gonna wanna be lunging deep, and you're not gonna, be wanna, you're not gonna wanna squat deep, because it's gonna irritate it and it's gonna make it worse. So that's why we're gonna go in and show you how to isolate it without causing any extra pain in the groin. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how to test the rectus femoris here. So over here, two and a half, five pounds, this is gonna be on the weaker side of things. And this is what you wanna really work the athlete up to, the seven and a half, 10 pound. These are ankle weights here. So let's just show you two and a half pounds. Very simple, okay? Come here like that. What we're gonna do is, okay, we're gonna sit back here we're gonna post up onto our elbows. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna lift and extend. That's all we're gonna do. If you sit upright and you go like this, you're gonna feel it more into the vastus lateralis and your VMO. If you lay back here, you're gonna feel it right along this muscle chain right here, 
right? This is where the athlete should feel it. That's the rectus femoris. So all you're gonna do is just lift and extend. That's it, that's how simple this is, okay? And if they feel it into, more into the TFL here, which is also part of hip flexion, or the sartorius, you know that the, that the rectus femoris is very weak, and you're gonna to have to apply a different technique. I'm gonna show you that in the next clip. But again, this is all it is here. Just lift and extend, and then you just ask them where they feel it. If they don't feel it in the center line here, and they feel it in the, the TFL or sartorius, then you, need to, then you need to take a different route. So if those compensations are taken over, TFL, sartorius, then what you wanna do is, is you wanna take this pad here, or a pad like this, you put up a couple towels, and you want to take the hip flexor, the other hip flexor out of it. And you want to make it more knee extension, just laying back here. And you want to keep a little bit of pressure on the pad, 50%, 50 lift, 50 up here. And then you're going to notice that some of these the hip flexor muscles are going to be out of the, some of the other hip flexor muscles will be out of the equation here. And then we have complete isolation of the rectus femoris right here. And that's all you do. And then you, once they, once they start getting stronger here, then you take the pad and you start lifting the leg here, adding the other hip flexor muscles into it, adductor chain, TFL, sartorius, psoas, along with the rectus femoris, and then you just build them up in weight here till they get to the 10 pounds. And uh, even though those other muscles are taking over, even though you're, at, even though you're in hip extension here, everything should be felt through the rectus femoris. As far as reps and sets go, you could do two or three days a week, three to four sets of 15 to 20, and work your way up from either two pounds up to 10 pounds with this exercise. Remember, don't go up in weight unless you feel it in the rectus femoris here. If you feel it in through the sartorius here or the TFL, TFL right here, that's too much weight. If you enjoyed watching this video, please like this video and subscribe to our channel. For more information on how we train and rehab athletes, visit our playlist titled Educational Episodes.